So we'll now talk a little bit about the current situation of uh, COVID-19 in the world. I don't need to tell you, you're experiencing them, the serious impact on economic growth, social relationships, healthcare infrastructure in most of the affected countries. Uh, also the fact that uh, the food and, se and agricultural sector will be affected. The World Food Program predicted that some 250 million people will be suffering from severe food shortages. So now we'll talk about the impact on refugees and migrants more specifically. More than 80% of the world's refugee population and nearly all of the world's internally displaced people, or IDPs as we call them, are hosted in low to middle income countries. And many of those countries have weaker health and water, sanitation and hygiene systems and are dealing with multiple emergencies, including war, abject poverty and environmental de degradation. In Syria, 68,000 people are living in the al Hol camp where one person must live within a tiny space similar, similar to that of a single car parking space. And then in another camp on the island of Lesvos in Greece, approximately 1,300 people share one water tap and live in makeshift shelters and under sheets of tarpaulin. International migrant workers are also being deported and losing jobs by the hundreds of thousands. We need to make sure that uh, refugees and migrants are afforded the same kind of help that the general population is afforded in the countries where they're living, that they have the help that they need to be able to get uh, assistance if they are beginning to show the symptoms of uh, COVID-19. Because of the conditions these people are living in, once the infection starts to rage, literally rage in these places, that it will spread like wildfire. We in ICMC are involving the refugees in, and trying to help, get them to help us to educate others, uh, both family members, other refugees and migrants, and people in the local host populations about the situation of COVID-19, how it spread, how to prevent its spread, and also what to do, how to recognize some possible symptoms of COVID-19 so that they could seek help. Uh, one example of that is in Malaysia, where um, in general, we've, we've formed a refugee protection corps to help us with the refugee population, mainly Rohingya refugees, and to uh, prevent sexual and gender-based violence, but also now to help us prevent the spread of, of uh, COVID-19 in those communities. In Pakistan, in addition to the education, we also have continued to keep our medical services in ICMC clinics at camps along the border of Afghanistan. And then in lockdown situations, uh, the ICMC staff has really made heroic efforts to maintain contact and services with the refugees and migrants whom we serve. In Malaysia, our staff is developing internet-based tools to prevent domestic violence among the Rohingya and other refugees affected by the lockdown. We're calling this program Peace at Home, and we're trying to help them understand the ways that they could cool down and make sure that violence doesn't break out in the home. Um, our Jordan colleagues uh, are applying for special permits to make home visits and thus be able to deliver cash assistance and other daily living supplies to the refugees who are in, who are in lockdown, both in camps and in the urban centers. In Greece, in addition to our legal and social services, which we're doing remotely, we also send protection experts into two of the refugee camps in order to monitor conditions there and to intervene on behalf of the most vulnerable refugees, especially the unaccompanied uh, children. And finally, uh, we continue to advocate both at the global level and then at national level through our member bishops conferences and other partners for policies and laws that offer health care and economic support to all especially to migrants, refugees, and IDPs without regard to their status. And, and we appeal particularly for the release of people from dangerous conditions in detention and the improvement of risky camp and urban living conditions and to relocate unaccompanied migrant and refugee children from camps in Greece. 
Pope Francis. His own direct pastoral witness and leadership is such a strong signal. And uh, also some very practical responses, his COVID-19 global response team, uh, where he has teams of people working on looking at the impact of COVID-19 right now, and also trying to project the impact long into the future, but also to ask the, the deeper questions, which he already asked in his encyclical Laudato Si, of what happens you know, in the future? Do we just go back to what we thought was normal, or do we really make some deep changes in our economic, our social, our political uh, situations in the world? And the worst thing we could do is simply to try to go back to what we were doing exactly the way we were doing it before. Pope Francis has constantly reminded us that uh, the novel coronavirus outbreak is a trying time for everyone, but more so for those on the margins of our societies, like migrants and refugees, who are often the most vulnerable. Thus, he urgently appeals to us for solidarity, and I'll quote him here. We are in the same boat, all of us fragile and disoriented, but at the same time important and needed, all of us called to row together. So I hope that this message of rowing together, of solidarity, of caring for the most vulnerable, uh, will be resounding throughout the world as we continue our response uh, to COVID-19. Thank you.